Hello, everyone, and welcome to Heads Up, the weekly webcast and podcast of the National Headache Foundation. I'm Dr. Lindsay Weitzel, migraine strategist, founder of the Facebook group Migraine Nation, and chronic daily migraine survivor. I am here today with Dr. Tim Smith. Hello, Dr. Smith. How are you? Thank well, you for being thank you. here. <laughs> uh, Dr. Smith is the CEO of Study Metrics Research and has conducted numerous clinical trials on migraine medications and devices, many things related to migraine. He is also the vice president of the National Headache Foundation. So thank you so much for being here. We have an exciting topic today. I've been waiting for this for a long time. So uh, we are going to discuss devices and we actually have the devices that we're going to discuss so that people can see them, see how they're used and how they're worn. Uh, so devices are, are pretty cool because they aren't invasive, the ones that we currently have for migraine and the side effect profile is fairly low. So people are always very interested to try them. So we're gonna go into four of the devices today that are used for migraine. And it's very exciting because one of them is also approved for cluster. And one of them is approved for use in the adolescent population. Um, so we're gonna do, we're gonna discuss Cephaly, GammaCore, Savvy, and Nerivio Migra. So without further ado, Dr. Smith, let's begin with the Cephaly device. Uh, that one's been out the longest, I believe. Uh, many of us are familiar with it. Um, Cephaly is approved for both acute and preventive treatment of migraine, correct? That's correct. It's uh, approved for both acute and uh, preventive treatment for migraine in adults. And um, <clears throat> people who are familiar with this device know that it's it's been marketed for a while but the original version was this uh it looked like a wonder woman tiara or something it kind of went around the 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 head and and and, and uh, synced up to the forehead what the stimulates branches of the trigeminal nerve and it carries a signal back to the brain stem to dampen out the migraine impulse it sort of stimulates the what we call a descending pain inhibition pathway all of these uh, or at least three of the neuromodulators uh, do that. We call them neuromodulators. Uh, just found out the other day that some people are referring to these are, as electroceuticals. So, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, what, who, what's in the name, right? Um, but anyway, so this is the Cephaly device. They've redesigned it. So it's just this really small um, device. And the way you do it is it's two parts to it. There's a uh, uh, an electrode, they call it, and it looks like this, and it's got a gummy, sticky surface to it. And what you do is you apply it right to your forehead with the, the V coming down in the middle, and mm -hmm. then it presses right on and it sticks, and it's got the electrical conducting gel on it. They do make a hypoallergenic version of this as well. And then on the back, this is the front of the device, that you can see there, and it's got an on-off switch and an adjustment switch there. It's very tiny. <laughs> yeah, very tiny. And on the back, it's got some little tiny electrodes. You can't see it from that side, but there's some little uh, not electrodes, but little magnetic things, and and you put it up there, and it sinks itself to it magnetically. And so right. it's there, and then you turn it on by just pushing the button, comes on, and then you push it again, and it activates the device. And then as the the uh, uh, intensity, the amplitude of the electrical current starts to go up, then what you do is once you start feeling it and it starts getting a little tingly, you touch it again and it stays at that level, uh, you know, until the treatment session is over with. Okay. If you start getting used to it, then you can push it again or hold it down and it'll take it up a few more notches and as soon as you let go, it'll stay even from there. This one's what they call, the new device is what they call the dual device. I don't want to spend too much time on it, but basically it's approved for both episodic and uh, our, our prevention and acute treatment. Right. The difference being the acute treatment is longer. So if you activate the acute treatment cycle by pushing it once, it activates for 60 minutes. That's a full treatment course. And if you want to do it as a preventive every day, just you know, try to keep them from coming on, it's a 20 minute cycle. And what you do is you push it twice and then it, uh, it'll come on and then again you turn it off. If it gets too intense, you can just reach up there and pull it off and it turns itself off. 
once it's gone through the full 60 or 20 minute cycle, depending on whether you're doing acute or preventive, it'll make a tone and then and it'll turn itself off and you're done and you put it away. The okay. electrodes, um, interestingly and importantly, the electrodes are reusable. You use them uh, up to 20 times and then, and then you discard them. And so you save the little piece of plastic that they come on, mm -hmm. put it there, and then you keep it till the next time and just keep it where it won't dry out, you know, basically. It doesn't have to be medically sealed or anything like that, okay. but sunlight or whatever. And the um, effectiveness of the cephaly, I believe, is about 59% um, of people experience pain relief after one hour, correct? Yeah, and, and these are always better. All of these devices are better if you can treat early, early. We know that's true for any treatment for acute migraine, especially. Mm -hmm. Uh, but for these uh, uh, neuromodulation devices, uh, try to treat early if you can. And that's where that one hour data comes from. It's, we're used to talking about two hour data for a lot of endpoints. Uh, but for, these, for this device in particular, they allowed people to treat early on. And if they had reduction or relief in pain, that was their measure at the one hour mark, uh, 59%. And it was clearly better than, than the sham treatment or placebo treatment. Okay, and overall the devices, we should say, their efficacy is very similar to that of triptans. I would um, say that's a good generalization probably, yeah, so we can think of it that way. Okay, well let's move on to the next one, which is called the Savvy. It used to be called the Spring TMS, I believe. Yeah. Um, I think it's the largest device that we're going to look at today. <laughs> yeah, so I, this, is, uh, this is not electronic stimulator this is a magnetic stimulator mm -hmm. what it does is it produces a, a magnetic a pulse of magnetic wave and what you do is you apply it to the back of the head and there are a right. lot of about how migraine begins the first study that we did on this years ago we treated people during aura to try to prevent the headache from coming on and it did show success and we always talk about how they're most of the treatments that are being approved or have been approved, they don't have good data on aura. This is one that does have some aura data for it uh, that shows that it can uh, either prevent or decrease intensity of, uh, of the migraine attacks if you, treat, if you treat while the aura is ongoing, but it also works during the pain phase as well. Uh, and it's approved, as we mentioned before, for both acute and preventive treatment uh, for uh, adults and adolescents uh, down to age 12. Yeah, that was what I wanted to point out is this is the device that can be used in adolescence. So <laughs> yeah. for any younger people with migraine or parents watching, this is one you might want to ask your provider about because um, that's very exciting. Um, you don't have to apply any kind of, you know, transducers or, or electrodes or anything like that. What you do is if I can show this and if you can see it, there's a button here and a button here, and mm -hmm. that thumbs go basically. So you're holding it like this, but then when you apply it to your back of your head, you put it on like that, and then you can push either button with either thumb and that will activate it, okay? And then it makes a, uh, uh, the, the electronic impulse itself, or the magnetic impulse magnetic, is yeah. silent, but the machine makes a little beep when you do it so you know it's done. And uh, there is a regimen, I won't get into, bogged down into the details of how many times you use it and when you repeat and stuff like that. But there's one course of treatment for acute therapy, trying to turn off a migraine. And then there's another course that you use twice a day, you know, it's basically four treatments in the morning, four in the evening uh, to try and uh, prevent migraine. And they have good results on that. The okay. Effectiveness. A couple of things I will, you know, is uh, that the application needs to be to the head, not down on the neck. Mm -hmm. and Never ever apply it to you know the front of any anywhere else on your body. It's really back here. Even if your headache is in your forehead, you, it doesn't. It's not a thing you want to try to right. apply to the pain area. It's only been studied and and location of the pain is not a determinant of whether it'll be affected or not. You still apply it to the same area back there. So there are some extra restrictions for the savvy because it's a neuromagnetic device whereas the other ones are um not magnetic so what are, are just a couple of those restrictions so people are aware well and to be clear all of them you, you shouldn't use them in conjunction with another uh neurostimulating device right. 
and for we didn't mention it with the Cephaly device, but if you've got cranial implants or metallic plates or something on the on the head or the scalp or in the brain, uh, staples from an aneurysm or something like that, you uh, um, there's, there's theoretically the electrical stimulation could heat up some of those parts, and so we have mm -hmm. to avoid that. With the spring TMS, since it's a magnetic uh, stimulation, and that can affect things like pacemakers, uh, deep fibrillators, any other uh, metallic parts, even stents and cardiac valves that are made out of metal, uh, even things like uh, metallic ink tattoos, you have to be, at least theoretically, you have to be careful with those. Mm -hmm. Uh, also, anybody sitting really close to you ha who has a device like that, uh, you know, you would want to give yourself, it's supposed to be at least two feet separation from anybody else who might have metallic parts inside their body or certainly uh, mag magnetic uh, sensitive devices. Okay. Turn off a pacemaker or another nerve stimulator by holding the magnet over it. So you don't want to do that unintentionally. Right. Yeah. And, and the other thing people don't think about is magnets can affect your credit card stripes and your telephone. Or your phone or. <laughs> you have to keep those two feet away from the device when it's being used also. So, right. And uh, so just so people know the numbers, just to review savvy, you can use it if you're an adolescent and um, it has a two hour pain freedom rate of nearly 40%. So yes. um, that's the savvy. Let's move on to the gamma core. It is the non-invasive vagal nerve stimulator. So it is applied to your neck. Yep. Let's see what that looks like. This is it. If I can get it close enough to the camera, maybe you can see. Yeah, right. we can see it. And it's got the electrodes on the top. Yep, right here, the electrodes on the top. Mm -hmm. And there's a, it's hard to visualize here, but there's an on off button right here. Mm -hmm. uh, an intensity amplitude buttons here on the side. You can turn it up or turn it down in terms of the intensity of the electrical current that goes uh, with it. So you can see it's about the size and weight of a, of a like a shaving razor, electric, electric razor, for example. And this stimulates the vagus nerve. And so vagus nerve is the longest nerve in your body. It's a cranial nerve, comes from your brain. It circulates all through your system and controls autonomic function for your internal organs. Uh, and it has uh, uh, this, another dampening mechanism. So if you stimulate it, it sends a feedback mechanism to the brainstem, which again, activates that uh, migraine inhibiting inhibition pathway. And so uh, lots of studies on this. Actually, we used to do implantable um, uh, vagus nerve stimulators 20 years ago. Mm -hmm stimulate continuously and they were used for things like uh, refractory epilepsy and we also studied them for migraine and the like. But this transcutaneous model is much more user friendly. You don't have to have a surgery to implant it as all of these devices are. And with this, uh, with this device, uh, um, basically what you do is you have to, on these electrodes, you have to put a little drop of this conducting gel on there and that will get a good seal on the skin. It just takes a little blob of it right there on the end on each side and uh, what you do is you find your carotid pulse because the vagus nerve goes right along your carotid pulse so you mm -hmm. just find your Adam's apple go right adjacent to it in between the Adam's apple and this fleshy muscle here in your neck you should be able to feel it and that's where you want to stimulate and you want to put it in in a vertical up and down position there mm -hmm. so you hit the on button and then you makes a noise then you apply it and, then and if it's working it pulls your lip yeah. down and what you do is you turn up the intensity and now so i've turned it up it's starting to feel a little tingly there and now i can feel it kind of causing my muscle to contract there and that's perfectly fine and the idea is this everybody's different so some people need a higher intensity some people can only tolerate and need a lower intensity uh, this is about what's comfortable to me, and I'm at uh, 16. Since some of our patients go up to 25 or 30, uh, if I turn it up higher, sometimes you can hear my voice change a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I'm not. That's kind of what it does, and it starts to. If you look, yeah. you see my lips. So what he's trying to tell you is that it will pull your lip down, and that means that you're in the right spot, and that, that it's working. Right spot, and right. 
back doing this, but I, I, it's probably a little too much if it starts to affect your voice and that sort of thing. And I can feel it tingling uh, and it's, it's not uncomfortable. You can make it uncomfortable by dialing it up even mm. higher, but this is probably about the right dose for me and I'm at 16. That's usually where it is, 16 or 17. I've seen people tolerate up to 30 something. Right. Uh, the, the range goes up to 100. Um, so this, if you turn it, once you activate it and you kind of keep it there, you can move it around a little bit to try to get it in the right place. And when you feel that lip pull, that's where you're in the right place. Okay. Well, the one thing that I definitely want to make sure people know about the Gamma Core is it is the one device that is not just approved for migraine, it's also approved for cluster. Um, the acute and preventive treatment of migraine, it's also approved for use in episodic cluster. Correct. And, and the dose, it, it, incidentally, you turn it on and then it runs, it times itself after two minutes. That's the sort of the dose and you're supposed to treat you know, two times for migraine. You can hear the little dose, the little beep, beep my two minutes are up. And, uh, but you treat for migraine, you treat uh, a couple of treatments and then you wait 15 minutes. And if it's not gone, you can treat again for, you know, for two more, um, two more minutes. Mm -hmm. And then if it's not gone in two hours, you can uh, re-implement it and, and do another two treatments of two minutes each. So, um, you know, but the cluster headache uh, dose is, is higher. Uh, it's like three treatments times three, and you can treat up to four headaches, uh, you know, if, uh, with our, our um, six, uh, three times treatments times two, up to four times. I'm getting into doses on this. You can look it up online if you're really, really interested, but you can, uh, for that dose on cluster headache, you can go up to 24 treatments in a day, you know. So okay. you, you think about cluster headache sufferers who, who uh, struggle with having enough doses of medication to get them through, certainly as an adjunct to treatment, this you can treat up to four, you know, uh, cluster episodes, uh, you know, over the course of the day and still, and, you know, if you can mix and match oxygen, triptans, it makes a nice little addition to your toolkit. So it's right. migraine, acute treatment of migraine, prevention of cluster, and also uh, acute treatment of episodic cluster uh, episodes. So it gives you that broad range of, of uh, utility there that, uh, that is very helpful for, for people. Okay, let's move on to the Nerivio Migra. Now, yes. this one is, I believe, our newest one, and it's very interesting because you wear it on your arm. It doesn't go on your head. Um, so let's chat about that. Show it to us. It's so cool. Yep. This is it. So this is the electronic transducer. It's just a little, you know, my light reflection here is not good, but you can see there's little, there's little devices right here. And it's uh, another one of these where there's this backing you peel off. Right. And there's this uh, gummy sticky stuff on the inside. And mm -hmm. where this one goes on your upper outer arm. So you what you what you do is you apply it, for instance, right here. Mm -hmm. Kind of sticks, not like glue. It doesn't stick, and if you leave it there long enough, the edges will start peeling up. So what we do is we have this uh, little cuff that goes around it to hold it in place. And so, put this on here. People that do this all the time get very efficient at it. Uh, <laughs> Hopefully, because you have to put it on when you're in pain. Um, yeah. While he's doing that, I'll tell people that the pain relief at two hours with this device is about 67%. It's got pretty good numbers. There we go. It's, yeah. it's, it's lighting it's up. up the other cool thing about it is uh, you operate this from your cell phone. So yeah. this you download an app to your phone, and then uh, you uh, it connects to the device through Bluetooth. And so you turn it on for your telephone through your telephone. And then you can dial up the amplitude on this, similar to what I did with the, with the Gamma Core device, only with this, it's stimulating the arm. This is what they call a, a, a remote uh, electronic neuromodulation. This sends us a signal to that same brain stem, but it's by a different pathway. And um, it causes those same uh, neuroelectrical impulses that, uh, decre you know, that enhance the pain inhibition pathway in the brain. Um, there's, we've, we've shown that there are elevations of serotonin and, and uh, norepinephrine in some of the key areas that 
uh, will help you uh, suppress the migraine attack. The treatment on this is a 45 minute treatment. So uh, this one, like the, like the Cephaly device, you can apply it and you can activate it and then you can walk around, you can do whatever you want if you feel like it. You know, so you can, you know, it's sort of hands-free once you get it going. And uh, that's an advantage for those. The Gamma Core you have to, you know, obviously have to use and, and the Spring TMS or Savvy, uh, you have to, uh, you know, use your hands to apply. Mm-hmm. But you, it's not a continuous thing. It's an instantaneous thing. And for the Gamma Core, it's only two minute uh, sessions that you do times two or three, depending on what kind of headache that you're trying. But you treat this, you know, just like you would any other treatment, activate it, it times out after 45 minutes. Uh, if uh, you can repeat after a couple of hours, if you need to, uh, for all of these, there's, you know, since you're not taking drugs, you know, it's, uh, they have some uh, limits on or, you know, typical usages that, that we have because that's what was used in the study. But mm-hmm. uh, there are, you know, electrical neuromodulation, you know, implanted devices that work around the clock for years and years, for, you know, that, uh, Stim- the vagus nerve stimulators, we used to use those implanted devices, and they, people use them continually daily for 20 years. Right. And it doesn't seem to show that there's any uh, downside. So, okay. Main side effects are just issues where it's applied. The same thing for the, uh, the Nerevio Migra is you know, you dial it up to where you're comfortable. If you dial it up really high, you'll see the muscles start to twitch in your arm. That's probably a little too high. Uh, you want to push it up to a dose where you're flirting with discomfort, but not really uncomfortable with it. Mm-hmm. That's your dose. And you should try to stimulate with that. For some people, it's very low. For others, it's higher. But you got that flexibility so you can turn it up a little bit. Or if it's a little uncomfortable, you can turn it down using your phone. And they okay. have kind of application. So uh, the platform that you're linking to, kind of tracks your headache treatments and how often you're using it. And, and you can punch in, you, you can add some data in there about how you're feeling and stuff like that. So, and really quick with the Nerivio, it, it's approved for the acute treatment. Is it pro- approved for prophylaxis of migraine? It's not approved for prophylaxis at this time. I'm not sure if they're gonna study it for that. It's, uh, it's not, we just completed a study for using it in chronic migraine as an acute intervention, which is an unusual study because we've never studied an acute abortive therapy in a chronic migraine population. This is the first time I've ever done it. The first time I've never seen a report, a randomized controlled or uncontrolled clinical trial uh, for chronic migraine. So Mm -hmm. the, the study is just completing as of this week. We just saw our last patient that's exiting the study yesterday. And uh, we expect we'll get some data. We'll have some results on that in the coming weeks or months. And uh, whether it will be approved on that, I don't know. It's a difficult, difficult study population to, you know, because there's so many overlapping headache days, as you know, any chronic migraine uh, patient will tell you. Yeah. You know, sometimes it's hard to tell where one begins and the next one ends, or, you know, or vice versa. And it, it's... Uh, it's frustrating because it's a hard model to, model to study. They use some computer algorithms to study it uh, in this in this setting. So we'll okay. see. Hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll have new and better data for for all of these things. So. Okay, great. Is there anything else you'd like to add to this discussion on devices for the treatment of migraine before we go today? Uh, you know, it's um, it's it's just a it's a it's a treatment model that. Uh, that, that patients are interested in. Mm-hmm. It's, it's uh, so many of our patients take multiple medications, preventive and acute and rescue, and they have, they have comorbid illnesses that they take, take other medicines for, sleep disturbance, mood disorders, everything, all the different things that go with the sensitive migraine brain. And so it's a nice notion to be able to have effective treatments that uh, don't give you a drug side effect. It doesn't have to be metabolized by your liver. There are no right. drug reactions to worry about and those kinds of things. So it makes a nice addition and uh, to you know your uh, your toolbox that you right. use. So we're excited to have it. There's some new things under study. 
uh, that may be coming forward in the next few years. So we, instead of talking about four approved devices, a couple of years, we might be talking about six or eight, who knows? Uh, it's uh, pretty, again, we talk about it all the time. The drug studies, the same is true for the, for the uh, device studies. Uh, it's an exciting time. It's, it's <laughs> nice to have the different treatment options. Right. Counted them up a couple of weeks ago, there's something like 18 new interventions just on the pharmaceutical side. You throw in some medical devices too, and you know now your your possibilities are looking even better in terms of um, ways to treat and control migraine. Okay. For headache too, so uh, this is good. Yes. Well, thank you so much for being with us today, Dr. Smith. And thank you for demonstrating all the devices. It's much easier when we can see them when we're talking about them. So hopefully everyone found something interesting, maybe something they want to talk to their physician about and maybe a device they want to try today. So thank you so much for joining us today on Heads Up. And please join us again next week. I hope you all have a fabulous rest of your week. Bye-bye.